Cornish coast near Land's End. The rugged cliffs and romantic coves make it a haven for artists, and every summer for holiday makers in their thousands. But in the early spring of 1967, a threat loomed up on the sea. At 9.23 a.m. on Saturday, March the 18th, the Torrey Canyon, one of the biggest tankers yet built, sailed onto the reef. The Torrey Canyon, driven hard on the needle sharp rocks, was filled with 118,000 tons. In pictures taken over the weekend of Easter, in the last days before the vessel was bombed, the Torrey Canyon, her back now broken, was turning the sea purple with her fatal cargo. The disposal of the oil slicks before the coast was devastated in what might easily have been a national disaster was the task facing the local authorities, the army and the navy, and indeed the government itself. In the first week, 30,000 tons of oil had gushed out of the stricken ship, and during one night, the night of Easter Sunday, another 30,000 poured into the sea. 60,000 tons of drifting oil and another 60,000 still in the Torrey Canyon's holes. A force-eight gale carried the oil towards the Cornish coast. Giant oil slicks, 35 miles long and 15 miles wide, in places 10 inches thick, formed a threat to the coasts of West England and Brittany on a scale never before experienced. A Unilever chemical company, Price's Brumbra, supplied a concentrated detergent raw material, one of the main constituents for the emulsifier used to break up the oil. And working round the clock, production was stepped up to meet the emergency. Each of the bigger tankers leaving the Merseyside plant contained enough detergent concentrate for 20,000 gallons of emulsifier. The emulsifier was transported by road, rail and sea at the rate of 80,000 tonnes a day. It came on every lorry and tanker available for redistribution to emergency centres hastily set up all along the peninsula. Falmouth, usually quiet and peaceful, became the hub of the rescue operation. Pumps transferred the emulsifier from the huge tankers into 45-gallon drums to be rushed to smaller centres like Dulin, where trawlers and launches waited to take it aboard. It was even pumped into small tin cans. It didn't matter how small the containers were, as long as they were sound enough to hold liquid and could be shipped. As supplies of the emulsifier became available, spraying began. The threat appeared to be reducing, but as danger signs were lessening, the winds whipped to gale force and drove the oil inshore. On Good Friday, March the 24th, the beaches at Sunnan Cove and Treen were coated in oil. Other beauty spots, Gunwallow Cove, Cape Cornwall, St Ives and Port Leven were covered in thick layers of sludge. A demonstration laboratory shows clearly the way in which a detergent works. Oil in water, however much it may be agitated, will reform unchanged on the surface. But if a detergent solution is added, the oil begins to break up at once, and once broken up, remains emulsified. The emergency technique off the Cornish coast was simple. The boats, big and small, plied up and down the oil slicks, pumping gallons of emulsifier through improvised sprays onto the oil. The propellers churning up the oil as the boat sailed back and forth across the slick.
The cost of the Torrey Canyon disaster is still being counted. It runs into millions. The emulsifier proved itself on the sea, but the oil that still reached the Cornish coast left a trail of havoc and destruction. Now tankers three times the size of the Torrey Canyon are being built. In Easter 1967, disaster was only narrowly averted. Will the lessons learned be enough to help us if ever there should be another and greater wreck? <laughs>